Hey everybody, welcome back to the Michael Lofton Show on Reason and Theology. Let's talk more about the document issued yesterday by the Magisterium of the Catholic Church, a teaching document that goes over the various forms of blessings that the Church offers, and it also speaks of people who are living in a same-sex situation. It notes blessings that are directed at these uh, individuals, and so then the question is, okay, what is exactly the object of blessings? here because there is language in the document um, as I reviewed yesterday about couples and blessings for couples of uh, same sex and so then the question is okay well what is being blessed exactly with that kind of language are we talking about the blessing of the couple itself or are we talking about the blessings of the persons in the couple or of the couple that's the question that we need to review. I know I addressed and answered it yesterday in a review of the document, but I was reviewing the entire document, so I didn't focus on that at any great length uh, because the document itself and context was pretty clear. But again, there is language in there that talks about um, blessings for couples of the same sex. So that's what we need to focus on in this stream. Are we talking about blessing the couple itself? Or blessings uh, for the persons of the couple. I think the context is pretty clear in the document, but unfortunately, most people did not read the document. They just saw that language in paragraph 31, um, or perhaps the header there for section three of the document that is titled Blessings of Couples in Irregular Situations and of Couples of the Same Sex. They see that and they think, oh, that must mean the object of the blessing is the gay union itself. And that is why a lot of people in the media just kind of ran with Pope approves of blessing of couples of the same sex. And people have often understood it as a blessing of the union of the couple rather than the persons of the couple. And I'm going to demonstrate the context is the blessing is for the persons of the couple, not of the couple itself, not of the union itself. Um, and it's, in addition to that, I want to provide and go over with a short catechism that a priest friend of mine just wrote to help people better understand the document, what it is saying, what it's not saying, how we should and how we should not respond to it. I added just a few additions and tweaks to it, um, but the the substance and the majority of it is um, the work of a priest friend of mine, and perhaps in the future he'll come on and talk about it, but uh, he offered it to me to provide to y'all, and I think it is a great, great, um, uh, let's see here, um, opportunity for catechesis and a great resource to help understand the document. And so we're going to go over that. Um, then I also want to go over various um, reactions that have been made to the document by uh, specifically Catholic figures. I want to kind of see where they're at and how they have responded and reacted to it. And perhaps I'll interact a little bit with it. Okay. So just to um, make it very, very clear what I'm saying here at the outset. Um, I do think that there are a lot of misleading headlines out there. The, the headlines that you're going to see are Pope approves blessings for same-sex couples. And again, if you look at paragraph 31, let me show it to you. You can see where people who are not actually reading the document are getting this misunderstanding from right here. Blessings of couples in irregular situations and of couples of the same sex. Now, imagine you're a journalist who doesn't know much about theology um, and you're rushing to get something out there. So you're not really even reading very carefully. I could imagine a journalist who doesn't really know a whole lot um, seeing this headline and say and saying, OK, there it is. Blessings for couples of the same sex. And then they put that in the headline. And what do the. What does the average person take away from that? Well, the average person is going to take away from this phrase, the notion that the couple itself, that is the union, the disordered union itself is the object of the blessing. 
But if you just look at paragraph 31 and the entire context of the document, it's abundantly clear when it refers to blessings of couples of the same sex, it's in reference to the blessings for the persons of the couple, not of the union itself. But I could totally understand why people who aren't really looking into things, aren't fact-checking, aren't really trained in theology, I could totally understand how some of these, at the very least, secular reporters would misreport this stuff. What is inexcusable, however, is Catholic media misreporting and misinterpreting. That That is a different matter. I hold Catholics to a higher standard than secular, non-Christian in many cases, uh, voices and media outlets. Okay, so I um, <clears throat> I want to point out again when we speak of of here, there's a couple of ways in which this can be understood. It can be understood again as a blessing for the people of the same sex union, not for the union itself, or it can be understood as a blessing for the union of the couple itself. Now, if all we had to go on was just that little headline, it would be unclear. But if you just read the context, words only have meaning in their context. So what is it referencing? It's referencing persons. Let's actually read the uh, document. And um, I'm sorry, not the whole document. I already did a whole show yesterday going over line by line the entire document. Um but let's just hone in on this question. Let me remind you of paragraph five that states this. This is also the understanding of marriage that is offered by the gospel. For this reason, when it comes to blessings, the church has the right and duty to avoid any right that might contradict this conviction or lead to confusion. Such is also the meaning of the response of the congregation of the doctrine of the faith, which st states that the church does not have the power to impart blessings on unions of persons of the same sex. So that 2021 document is being reasserted here. It's being reasserted in this document, making it expressly clear that the blessings are not on unions of persons of the same sex. So when we see later on, Do, you know, language of blessings of couples of the same sex. It's not of their union. It is of the persons within this couple, the two individuals who are in this disordered union. The object of the blessing is the persons of the couple. The subject asking for the blessing is the couple, right? Who is asking for a blessing? A couple of a disordered union. What is the object? Is it the union itself? No, the document says absolutely not. And anything that would confuse that must be avoided. The object, however, of the blessing is the persons. Within the horizon outline here appears the possibility of blessing for couples in irregular situations and for couples of the same sex the form of which should not be fixed ritually by ecclesiastical authorities to avoid producing confusion with the power uh, with the blessing proper to the sacrament of marriage. In such cases, a blessing may be imparted that not only has an ascending value, but also involves the invocation of a blessing that descends from God upon those. Those is reference to a person or persons, individuals, people. Those is the object of the blessing, persons, not the couple, not, not the union, I should say, but rather the persons of the couple. So it is upon those who, who again is in reference to persons, not the union. Union is not a who. That's not the proper pronoun for a union recognizing themselves to be destitute and in need of his help. So this is not an approval blessing. Rather, this is a blessing for grace to live a holier life, to receive help from God, to stop sinning. 
and they do not claim a legitimation of their own status. So they're not saying, hey, please bless my union because my union is legit. No. They're not recognizing um, a legitimation of their status or claiming that or asking for that. But they beg, who beg, who again is in reference to persons, not the union, but who beg that all that is true, good, and humanly valid in their lives and their relationships be enriched. These are individuals who want enrichment of the things found in their life. They want healing. It says healed and elevated by the presence of the Holy Spirit. These forms of blessing express a supplication that God may grant those aids that come from the impulses of His Spirit, what classical theology calls actual grace, so that human relationships may mature and grow in fidelity to the gospel. This human relationship that they currently have right now is disordered. And they are sinning against each other. And the intention here is to receive grace that that human relationship would be properly ordered. That is a friendship, not an, uh, a union where they are sinning against each other. May mature and grow in fidelity to the gospel. What are two? What is the relationship between two people who are attracted to the same sex? A holy friendship. That is the relationship. A, a relationship of purity and chastity, not one of abusing each other with sexual acts. And so these actual graces are going to help them go away and move away from that disordered union and to grow in fidelity to the gospel for what purpose that they may be freed from their imperfections and frailties freed from sin freed from abusing each other and rather now oriented towards each other in a holy way in the way that two individuals should conduct themselves uh, who are not in a uh, marriage which is exclusively between a man and a man and a woman according to this document and that they may express themselves in the ever increasing dimension of the divine love now there's so much more in this document that bears out what i'm saying but i'm just pointing out in the immediate context of the language of blessing of couples of the same sex the meaning is clear in the context. Again, words only have meaning in their context. So we are talking about the blessing of persons of the couple, not of the union itself. Not of the couple's union, but of the persons within the couple. We need to, I need to get like a, a, a chalkboard and write it on there and, you know, read it over and over it and, and in fact we all need to get chalkboards and write it on there a hundred times the blessing is for persons of the couple not for the union itself and the blessing is to live a holier life and to be conformed to god's will not to validate a disordered union the document is expressly clear for anybody who actually reads it. That is all brought out. Now, I want to read this catechism to y'all. Again, I just posted it on the website, reasonatheology.com. And you can certainly go and check it out there and share it with anybody who is confused. Again, the following was written by a very holy priest and friend of mine with only a few additions on my part. And perhaps in the future, he will come out and um, speak about it. Um, but for now, he has given me permission to share it. I've only made a few minor edits and a couple additions. Like I added just a couple questions towards the end and that was it. Um, okay. So what is the magisterium of the Catholic church? Let's go over this because this is going to help us better understand what the document is explaining to us and what the document is teaching. And, and let me briefly just kind of address, uh, this before we actually dive in. Let me briefly talk about people who say oh this is sophistry that you're engaging in sophistry no no not at all you know 
Um, <laughs> I kind of wonder if people say that about Thomas Aquinas with a lot of the subtleties and nuances that he makes. Do they think that uh, Aquinas was a sophist? Um, but you look at Nicaea and you, even Chalcedon to an extent, and the debates there were literally over one letter in one word. Seriously. But that one letter in one word made a world of difference in meaning. One letter. Um, so some people kind of see that as, oh, these guys are quibbling over one letter. You know, look how petty Christians are. No, 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 no. The meaning is significantly changed by the alteration of one letter in these particular debates. Um, and if that is true of Nicaea and Chalcedon, how much more is it true of things like this? Whenever I point out that the document talks about blessings of couples, and then I point out, but wait, it's in reference, the object here, the subject might be the couple asking for a blessing, but the object of the blessing is the persons of the couple, not the union itself. And people might say, oh, this is sophistry. Really? Really, again, words have meaning in their context. It's not sophistry to point out a world of difference between the two. Uh, rather, it's just being faithful uh, to Catholicism to point these important distinctions out. Uh, so it's certainly not sophistry. Uh, in fact, I do think it's sophistry what people often engage in when they twist and bend these things to uh, come up with a... Um, uh, heretical interpretation of them. Anyways, and, and briefly, let me address this too. People say, Michael, isn't the fact that you have to do damage control with everything the Pope ever says evidence of how problematic he is or his documents are? No, I don't have to do any damage control for the documents that Pope Francis rele releases. I have to do a whole lot of explanation and damage control for Catholics who are out there spreading fake news and lying and twisting the words of the Pope. Yeah, I got to do a lot of damage control for those people. If those guys would just shut up and stop slandering the magisterium and twisting its words, there would be very little explanation required. But I have to do a whole lot of explanation in light of the fake news, not only of the secular press, but of Catholic figures. That's where damage control comes in. And I am happy and proud to defend the Catholic Church, Christ's teaching authority over and against the slanderers, the accusers, the disseminators of fake news. I'm more than happy to do damage control for the damage that they're, that they're doing. But it's not, again, damage that the Pope has done. It is damage that they are doing. So let's get it straight. All right, now let's take a look at the document itself. When I say the document. No, let me rephrase that. We already went over the document. Let's take a look at the catechesis of this document. Let's uh, go over this again. A uh, very, very um, uh, holy priest friend of mine wrote uh, wrote this with very minor additions on my part. Again, it's at reasonoftheology.com. I have a link to it there in the show notes. Share it with as many people as possible. This will help you understand everything you really need to know about this document. And it's not long. This is not long at all. It's a very short and simple catechesis, but it will it will help significantly. All right, question one, what is the magisterium of the Catholic Church? The magisterium, a.k.a. teaching authority of the Catholic Church, is the Roman pontiff, the pope, and the bishops in union with him. What is the role of the magisterium with regard to what Catholics are to believe? The role of the magisterium with regard to what Catholics are to believe is to offer authoritative teachings on faith and morals to be believed by the faithful of the church. Number three, on what authority does the magisterium exercise this role of teaching the faithful? The magisterium exercises this role of teaching the faithful on the authority of Jesus Christ, the founder of the church who gave this authority to Peter, the first pope, and to the apostles whose successors are the bishops. You can even see that in Pius XII in reference to non-infallible teachings. The uh, church is still speaking with the voice of Jesus in those cases. What disposition ought a Catholic have with respect to the magisterium when it teaches authoritatively? When the magisterium teaches authoritatively, a Catholic ought to have a disposition of humble docility 
towards these authoritative teachings. We are the students. The magisterium is the teacher. We are the learning church. The magisterium is the teaching church. We do not approach the magisterium as, as if we are the teachers of the church. No. The teaching authority is the teacher. We are the students, and we approach it with docility and humility, not with arrogance, and not usurping an authority that is not ours by pretending to be teachers and attempting to teach the teacher. Why ought a Catholic have a disposition of humble docility towards the magisterium when it teaches authoritatively? A Catholic ought to have a disposition of humble docility towards the magisterium when it teaches authoritatively. Because when the magisterium so teaches, it is teaching in the name of Jesus Christ, who said to his apostles, he who hears you hears me. And this same applies, this same saying applies also to the magisterium. And to be clear, that is literally applied, he who hears you hears me, to non-infallible teachings of the church, including infallible. So the whole thing. Uh, is fiducia supplicants on the pastoral meaning of blessings. That is the new document that just came out. An authoritative teaching of the magisterium. I'm seeing people push back against it, and it's kind of laughable. Yes, fiducia supplicants is an authoritative teaching of the magisterium, as it was approved by the Pope in common form and was promulgated in the form of a declaration. I've literally seen some people say, well, isn't it wasn't approved, it wasn't approved in uh, in forma specifica. <laughs> and therefore it's not authoritative and it's just laughable it's like um you do realize that things that are not approved in specific form but things that are approved in common form are also still authoritative and magisterial and bonding on your intellect and will you do realize that right so yeah okay ought then a catholic receive the teachings of fiducia supplicants with a disposition of humble docility yes a catholic uh, a Catholic can or is to receive the teachings of fiducia supplicants with a dispos disposition of humble docility, since it is an authoritative teaching of the magisterium of Christ's holy church. In most cases, dissent from the document or dissent from the teaching results in incurring, quote, grave sin, end quote, according to Pope Pius X uh, in Prestantia Scripturae. Now, let's talk about catechesis on the document itself. Why was Fiducia Supplicans written? Fiducia Supplicans was written to respond to various questions from different parts of the world about the proper use of blessings by ordained ministers, especially in light of certain abuses that have recently crept into the church by various prelates. What is the main topic of fiducia supplicants? The main topic of fiducia supplicants is the meaning, or is the pastoral meaning of blessings. And in fact, there is some development here. In fact, I've never seen a document that goes into the concept of blessings in the kind of detail that it does. That's where there is uh, development. That is where there is, uh, you know, things that are new, if you will, not new substantially, but new accidentally, uh, as in further explaining the deposit of faith on the question of blessings. Does fiducia supplicants contradict or overturn previous church teaching, such as the 2021 CDF document of the same topic? No, fiducia supplicants does not contradict or overturn previous church teaching, including the 2021 CDF document of the same topic, but rather by its own words, continues the perennial teaching of Holy Mother Church and deepens the concepts put forward in the 2021 CDF document. It explicitly notes how the perennial teachings are being upheld. Why did the Holy Father issue this document, given the fact that so many, for whatever reasons, misinterpret it? <clears throat> I kind of wonder if we take that same line of questioning with the Bible, given that so many people have misinterpreted it and created new denominations and even cults based on uh, faulty interpretations of the Bible. Does that mean that God shouldn't have the Bible? Okay. All right. The Holy Father issued this document despite the fact that so many, for whatever reasons, would misinterpret it because he needed to respond to the errors of certain German bishops and others about these blessings. 
How many kinds of blessings are there according to fiducia supplicants? According to fiducia supplicants, there are three kinds of blessings. What are these three kinds of blessings? The three kinds of blessings are the following. A blessing from God to man, by which God pours gifts and helps upon man. A blessing from man to God, by which man praises God for his goodness and majesty. A blessing from man to man, by which man serves as an instrument of God to his fellow man to pour down God's helps or God's help upon this fellow man. <clears throat> Can sin be blessed? No. The church has always taught that sin cannot be the object of blessing. And the document reasserts that. Again, see paragraph 5. Can sinners be blessed? Yes, sinners can be the object of a blessing. Examples include during the liturgy when the priest blesses the whole congregation. When people who are not properly disposed to receive the Eucharist approach the priest for a blessing. And when an unrepentant person approaches a priest in the confessional for absolution, in the latter case or in this last case, the priest withholds absolution but offers a blessing. Did you know that? So if you're a priest and you have a penitent who comes to you and he's clearly not repentant, but he wants absolution, you're not to give him absolution. Instead, you give him a blessing. Even though he is not repentant, you give him a blessing. Are homosexual actions sins? Yes, homosexual acts are sins. Can homosexual acts be blessed? And by the way, the document reaffirms that. Not that it somehow needed to, since that's already clear, uh, but it does. Can so homosexual acts be blessed? No, homosexual acts cannot be the object of a blessing because they are sins. Can those persons who fall into the sin of homosexual acts be the object of a blessing? Yes, persons who fall into the sin of homosexual acts can be the object of a blessing. Does blessing a person who habitually falls into the sin of homosexual acts serve as approval of that sin? No, blessing a person who habitually falls into the sin of homosexual acts does not serve as approval of that sin, but rather serves as a sign that the person needs God's graces to overcome that vice. If a couple who habitually fall into the sin of homosexual acts with each other are blessed, does that necessarily mean that their sins are being approved by that blessing? No. If a couple who habitually fall into the sin of homosexual acts with each other are blessed, that does not necessarily mean that their sins are being approved by that blessing. May a couple who habitually fall into the sin of homosexual acts with each other be blessed. Yes, a couple who habitually fall into the sin of homosexual acts may be blessed. Provided that the blessing is given in such a way that it is clear to the couple and to others that it is not their sins that are being blessed. Again, remember uh, the context of the document makes that very clear. Or approved of, but rather that they are as persons may overcome their vices and that their relationship be transformed from one that is sinful to one that is chaste. to a holy friendship to the way that two men should treat each other or two women should treat each other. Friendship, purity, chastity, not abusing each other. In other words, the persons of the gay couple are the object of the blessing, not the union of the gay couple. Should a blessing be given to such a couple who does not or who do not desire to overcome their sin? <clears throat> I have a whole lot of people asking about this, even though the document is pretty clear. Look at this answer. No, a blessing should not be given to a couple who do not desire to overcome their sin, but only to those who request a blessing because they are looking for strength from God to be chased. In fact, fiducia supplicants expressly envisions the blessings in question for those who wish to follow God's commands and will for their life. So the people who are asking for the blessing, according to the document, are people who are saying, I want to live holy. I want to follow God's will for my life. I need help. I need grace. Obviously, you have confession and there's a whole lot of graces there, of course. But we also have plenty of other blessings 
that are offered outside of confession to strengthen and to assist with those additional graces that come from confession. So they should go to confession and receive additional graces through these blessings. It's a both and, not a Protestant either or. How is it not a contradiction to hold that an ordained minister can bless such a couple in this manner in light of what the CDF taught in 2021 when it ruled that a same-sex union cannot be blessed? It is not a contradiction to hold that an ordained minister can bless such a couple in this manner in light of what the CDF taught in 2021 when it ruled that a same-sex union cannot be blessed because what the CDF taught in 2021 was, what, was that same-sex unions cannot be blessed precisely as same-sex unions, i.e. as sinful unions, for sin cannot be blessed, i.e. approved. Fiducia supplicants affirms this teaching, again, paragraph five, but goes on to say that the persons of the couple can be blessed provided that it is clear that the sins which they may have committed and may still commit are not being approved. Did you did you know that? Even though I brought it up, did you know that? The 2021 document that says no to blessing of sin itself says that the persons can be blessed, however. In this way, fiducia supplicants is a further explanation of the 2021 decision by the CDF. So this document builds on the 2021 document. What good could possibly come from an ordained minister blessing a couple who habitually fall into the sin of homosexual acts with each other? The good that could possibly come from an ordained minister blessing a couple who habitually fall into the sin of homosexual acts with each other is that the couple will be given actual graces, the document expressly says that, actual graces from God to overcome their sin. And they will realize that their Heavenly Father loves them, which will help them overcome their sin. Again, see paragraph 31. How ought a Catholic respond when faced with the commonly held opinion that the church in fiducia supplicants has changed her teaching on the sinfulness of homosexual acts? When faced with the commonly held opinion that the church and fiducia supplicants has changed her teaching on homosexual acts, uh, is to assert that this is not the case. So what, we, what are we to do? We're to assert that this is not the case and to show through the making of proper distinctions, just as St. Thomas Aquinas would do, and a good theologian would do, how this is the case. In fact, such is the duty of ever faithful Catholics, according to the magisterium itself. Again, for people who say, ah, this is just so frustrating making these distinctions. Laughable. You can't read a, a page of Thomas Aquinas without him making very, very subtle distinctions and writing, you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of words based on that subtle distinction. <laughs> Can the persons of the same-sex couple receive the blessing simultaneously? Fiducia supplicants expressly guards against any form of blessing that would result in scandal, confusion, or the appearance of blessing the union itself. In light of these qualifications, the blessings should not be administered to the persons of the disordered union simultaneously, but rather individually. Doesn't the reference in fiducia supplicants to blessing of couples in irregular situations and of couples of the same sex prove that the object of the blessing is the same sex union itself? Mm. No. Blessings of couples can be understood in two senses. A blessing of the persons of the couple or a blessing of the union of the couple. Fiducia supplicants goes to great length to note the blessing is for the persons of the couple, not the union of the couple. So certainly share that with others. I mean, I'll, I'll certainly you know fix the uh, uh, some of the typos that I have in there. Um, most of the typos are the results of, of, of me in there. So <laughs> don't 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 blame it on my priest friend. It's actually me. <laughs> I'm I'm the worst at editing uh, some of my own edits and stuff like that. So oh well, I'll I'll fix those. But please share that with others, uh, since that I think will tremendously help folks. Now, 
Coming up next, I want to address Father James Martin. I want to address other people's reactions. The USCCB, various care, uh, bishops out there, various uh, figures in Catholic media. I want to review some of their reactions to the document. So stay tuned for more. We'll meet here in just a few more moments. I'm going to grab me some coffee and uh, we'll meet back in just a moment. Are you a Catholic thinking about converting to Eastern Orthodoxy? Or are you a Protestant discerning whether or not to become Catholic or Eastern Orthodox? If so, I have the book just for you. It's called Answering Orthodoxy and engages all of the arguments that Eastern Orthodox use against the Catholic Church. I respond to all of them. I show that they are in error and in fact they're inconsistent because the things that Orthodox are objecting to are in fact found in their own tradition. So the fullness of the faith can only be found in the Catholic Church. Check out the book right now at shop.catholic.com for your copy today. All right, let me remind y'all, hit that subscribe button. Help me grow Reason and Theology to reach more people. The more you subscribe, the more you like, the more you comment, the more the algorithm will kick in and reach more people with this information. People have never heard of the channel or likely any uh, pushback against the narratives uh, that are out there in secular and Catholic media. So please help me grow the channel to reach more people. Hit that subscribe button. Um, okay. So let me first start with the uh, Father James Martin. You know, you'll notice that I'm running my victory lap saying, hey, this document completely vindicates what I've been saying and shows that these People who have been promoting fake news are wrong. So there's that. But then you also have guys like Father James Martin online, who I've often critiqued on this channel. Father James Martin online, who's running a victory lap claiming the exact opposite. <laughs> so it's like, wait, hold on. Hold on. What's going on here? Is, is the document unclear? Notice the difference. I literally did a whole stream yesterday reading through the document line by line and showing that. Showing my position has been vindicated. Nothing has changed. The, the Catholic magisterium hasn't changed its position. It's just further clarifying that which is already uh, there before. Whereas Father Martin doesn't do these kind of line-by-line -line readings of the document, does he? If he has, let me see it. I want, I want to see how he interacts with the vast majority of the document since the majority of things in there expressly undermine what he says. I mean, so and his position. Uh, so I don't think he can really grapple with the document and uh, can really give an exposition of it. So again, notice the difference. Yeah, we're both running victory laps and saying two completely different things, but I'm the one who actually shows you the document and reads it to you, and you can fact check me as I go through it, and you can fact check me live. Whereas I haven't seen that with guys like Father Morton, so I'll point that out. Um, and somebody somebody said something funny uh, not long ago. Let me try to pull up the screenshot. There's a couple comments here about Father Martin uh, in the comment section that, that I wanted to address. I thought this one was funny. Let me share my screen. Okay. All right, so this person says... <clears throat> Have you seen what uh, James Martin, I guess they meant Martin instead of Martin, is saying? James Martin. <laughs> Father James Martin. Have you seen what Father James Martin is saying? He is going to bless homosexual couples. Uh, again, we're, we're kind of equivocating here. Do we do we mean the couple as far as blessing the union, or do we mean the, the couple is asking for a blessing and we're blessing the persons of the couple? He does not see anything wrong with their lifestyle. So, please, let's not be naive. I have seen priests that bless sin, and this is going to allow more sin. And I wrote, let's be fair. Father Matten was abusing Scripture way before this. Should we blame Scripture or Father Martin? I mean, I mean, let's, let's be honest. You know, some people don't need a magisterial, uh, magisterial document to twist. They can just twist Scripture. 
And I've seen some twisting of scripture from Father Martin, and he was doing that way before this document was released. Is that a criticism of scripture? No, no more than is it a criticism of the magisterium. It's rather a criticism of the person who abuses and twists things. Hopefully unintentionally, I will give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that Father Martin has good intentions and doesn't realize how he is twisting scripture and the magisterium. I pray to God that is the case. And I sure hope it's not intentional. I, for his sake, I hope it isn't. Either way, at the end of the day, the net result is the same. People are misled by uh, his twisting of the magisterium. So at the end of the day, as far as everybody else, the net result, the damage is still the same. You know, like I said, people have been doing this to scripture for 2,000 years, creating cults and creating uh, schismatic churches and uh, false communities and all that based on uh, misinterpretations of scripture. Okay. So I thought that comment was interesting. Let me go to this other comment uh, that, uh, that I saw about Father Martin. Uh, that's why I'm going to start calling him because of that typo. Father Martin. Uh, okay. This is what Father Martin said along with many priests. I will now be delighted to bless my friends in same-sex unions. Okay. Well, I mean, are, are you blessing the friends or the union itself? I don't have an issue with Father James Martin is blessing the persons. For them to live a holier life. Amen. Thank you, Father Martin. Thank you. Good job. Now, if you're trying to bless their union, now that's something else, right? That's excluded. So he's certainly not interpreting the Pope the way you are. So are you sure the Pope wasn't clear? And I point out, he also twists Scripture, <laughs> doesn't he? Does that validate his interpretation of Scripture? I need you to think before commenting. I mean, just... Think through your arguments. Try to be a little bit more consistent. He twists scripture. That doesn't validate his twisting of scripture in his false interpretation. No more than his twisting of the magisterium. And the document of the magisterium is very, 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 very clear. So don't say, oh, the document is ambiguous or not clear. Stop it. You just haven't read the document. It's so clear. Uh, what is not clear is people who um, just grab a snippet and don't actually read the document and start twisting it. That's where the lack of clarity and confusion comes from. The confusion doesn't come from Pope Francis. It comes from the critics of Pope Francis. So the damage control that faithful Catholics have to do with these situations is not because of the magisterium of Pope Francis. It's because of the accusers, the accusers of the brethren, those who disseminate fake news. A lot of damage control has to be done because of them. It's unfortunate. And you know what? I'm happy to do that damage control because what I'm noticing is if we don't stand up and speak out against it, people are leaving the church. People are falling away from Jesus Christ or people are not coming to Jesus Christ because of those individuals. So I'm more than happy to do damage control for those guys who are out there creating a lot of damage and making shipwreck of people's faith. I'm more than honored to receive that blessing, to be part of those who are speaking out against it and leading people back to the church or helping them stay within the church and embracing the truth. Okay, let me go over some of the um, reactions by various people out there now that I've addressed the uh, Father James Martin thing. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I thought this was actually a really good um, and refreshing thing to see from the Black Catholic chick. I, I appreciated this. Uh, she, looks like she has a good take here. Uh, share my screen. Mm, there we go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> she says, I refuse to milk this for likes and clicks. Amen. The Pope absolutely bearing, um, the absolute bearing of false witness against the Pope. Uh, against Pope Francis on this is seriously some of the stuff that makes me question my presence in the space. I hear you. And and they've been doing this for years, years, with very few people holding them accountable and keeping them in check. But I'm starting to see faithful Catholics rise up and speak against this. I've been so proud of faithful Catholics. When I look through the comment section, 
And I see, you know, the comments or I see the videos and articles by people who are slandering the Pope, disseminating the fake news. I've been looking through the comments and you know what? I've been seeing a ton of people pushing back against this stuff, speaking the truth, quoting from the document, showing them this is fake news. This is what the document actually says. You know, I've been seeing people who are faithful to the Catholic Magisterium standing up. I've never seen it like this before, and I'm so proud of faithful Catholics. It's incredible to see it. Very encouraging. Okay, well, she continues, but we have a greater task over here, and that's sharing ways we can all uh, become better Catholics deep in our prayer life and uh, truly put in action what it means to live in the ways of our Lord. Absolutely. It's just, unfortunately, we can't always focus on those things, and we have to address the fake news of people because people are leaving the church over it. That's what's unfortunate. So instead of me doing streams where I just you know, expand, or, uh, go over sacred scripture and offer exegesis of sacred scripture, and instead of doing a stream about prayer and things like that, I still try to you know get into the channel because it's important. But instead of just focusing on those things, I have to go and do damage control against the fake news people and the lies and slander that they're engaging in. I have to go and address that because if I don't, guess what? I'm now seeing people leave and I'm doing nothing about it. Well, I can't have that on my conscience. I just, I just can't. Whether you agree with Pope Francis or not, like him or not, it doesn't matter. Do not conflate what the Vatican has said nor what he has said on this issue. Uh, the media is lying. Certain YouTubers are lying. Amen. Everybody get a hand. <laughs> Give a hand to the black Catholic chick. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Glad somebody saying it. Because shock and disgust get views and clicks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've had people say, oh, Michael's just doing this for views and clicks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do you know how many subscribers I've lost and how many opportunities I've lost that translates into losing money and influence and all kinds of things? Do you know how much I've lost for defending the magisterium? <laughs> but I'm happy to do it. That's It's fine. I'm happy to stand up for the truth. But if my motivation was clicks, first of all, I wouldn't even be doing Christian stuff. Are you kidding me? The the Christian market is is low compared to um you know just doing secular stuff. So if if my desire is really just here for clicks and and notoriety, <laughs> I'm not doing Catholic content. Are you are you serious? I would just do secular content. I would produce music and I would produce secular music because I have that skill set. That's what I would be doing, and I would probably be very successful in it. But rather, I'm not in this for notoriety. I'm in this for helping people. And so, yeah, I, I agree with the black Catholic chick. Um, it's not people who are defending the magisterium who really get the clicks and notoriety. It's kind of the other way around. It's the people who bash the Pope. They're the ones who experience incredibly ra rapid uh, growth of their... Um, uh, of their platforms and have plenty of opportunities opened up to them. You don't know how many people have canceled me. So many people have canceled me because I stand up for the magisterium. It's amazing. She says, I'm a content creator and I'm telling you how this goes. It's not just ignorance. Well, you know, in some cases it is and others, I agree with you. It's not. It is blatantly bearing false witness against the Supreme Pontiff. Yeah. In some cases it is. In some cases it's, Unintentional bearing false witness. Uh, go to the Vatican website and read the document for yourself. Amen. I think that will clear up the vast majority of people's questions if they just read the document. So that was really refreshing to see from the Black Catholic chick. I was happy uh, for that. Um, so I appreciate that. If only more people would um, be willing to say that. Uh, let's look at this response. I'm giving you just kind of a mixed here. Um, kind of pulling them up at random. This is from the Diocese of Grand Rapids. It says, the Diocese of Grand Rapids Office of Communications issues the following statement from Bishop Walkowiak of Grand Rapids on fiducia supplicants. Uh, 
Christmas reminds us of God's unchanging, immeasurable love for us. Likewise, today's declaration, Fiducia Supplicants, reminds us that the Spirit is always drawing us closer to the Lord. Many people respond to that by uh, respond to that call by asking the church's ordained ministers to offer a prayer to God for them with a blessing. These spontaneous private prayers and blessings are given routinely. They are nothing new. The declaration reaffirms an appropriate pastoral response to people who express a request for these prayers. Pope Francis urges us to contemplate with an attitude of faith and fatherly mercy. The fact that when one asks for a blessing, one is expressing a petition for God's assistance. A plea to live better. And a confidence in a father who can help us live better. The declaration does not provide, nor does it allow, liturgical blessings, which are public, regulated, and formally approved by the church for couples in irregular situations and same-sex couples. It's an important distinction that he notes here, that this is private versus public. It does, however, encourage private prayers for such persons seeking God's grace and the ability to follow Him faithfully. It is precisely in this context that one can understand the possibility of blessing couples in irregular situations and same-sex couples without officially validating their status or changing in any way the Church's perennial teaching on marriage. Pope Francis reminds us that these private blessings are simple gestures that provide an effective means of increasing trust in God on part of the people who asks for them. We should all stand ready to pray for one another and encourage greater confidence in God's merciful love. I appreciate that. Well done. Good job, Bishop. I really appreciate you pastoring your flock and helping them uh, digest that document. That's very, very helpful. Okay, uh, let's see what this take is. This is from the well-known uh, canonist, Ed Peters. If you know of someone who by predilection and education is more respectful of words than I am, by all means, point them out. Till then, let me say, the Lord is neither deceived by men's disingenuous phrasings, nor bound by their manipulation of terms, nor will he long be mocked. That's a odd take, uh, in my estimation. Uh, not really sure uh, how that's a helpful take, uh, or even accurate, to be honest. I certainly don't think that um, the document has disingenuous phrases uh, or a manipulation of terms. <clears throat> uh, nor do I think God is being mocked. So, yeah, no. Uh, let's go to another one. Just kind of pulling them up at random. I got a lot of these. Let's see. Uh, this one is from LifeSite News, or a LifeSite News author, I should say. LifeSite News author uh, or contributor, uh, Dr. Mike Hickson. So now what, dear friends? Were cardinals, will cardinals now act and publicly rebuke the Pope? Hmm. Hmm. Why would they need to do that? Um, what the document says is perfectly morally licit and orthodox. Um, but I don't really expect LifeSite News to have a better take. So, okay. Um, now this one was sad to see, although kind of not surprised with what all he's been saying for the last few years with a parallel magisterium and the Pope is in schism kind of comments. Uh, Father Thomas Winan, the well-known theologian, has been going astray for the last few years. He says, The blessed couples in irregular marriages or same-sex couples without giving the impression that the church is not validating their sexual activity is a charade. In the words of Captain Picard, is a charade. It's a charade, y'all. All those present at such blessings know without a doubt that such relationships are sexual in nature. No one is fooled. Actually, they're rejoicing that such uh, such sexual relations are being blessed. (laughs) I don't know how, because the document is clear that they're living in sin and their sinful unions not being blessed. Frankly, if I were in some kind of same-sex union, I would not 
be happy with this document. I would be like, this insults my union. You're saying that my union isn't actually a union in the eyes of God and it's sinful. I'd be offended. I'd be angry. <clears throat> That's the point of these blessings. It's not their sexual abstinence being blessed, but their sexual indulgence. Slanderous. Slanderous. And false accusation. We need to stop doing the work of the devil. The accuser of the brethren is hard at work in the hearts of Catholics. It's truly sad to see. Uh, let's see here. This one is from The Remnant. Michael Matt weighs in for us. What a shock. If you didn't see this coming, you're still in denial. This has been coming for years, as I proved once again in a recent Remnant Underground, Francis knows best. Really? Really? I guarantee you these critics, not one of them will do a video where they pull up the document, read it line by line, and explain it. Not one of them. I challenge any of the critics out there, Michael Matt, anybody else, just do one show showing the document to the audience. Like Pull it up on the screen so they can fact check you as you go through and read it to them. Read it and explain each paragraph line by line. Do that. Double dog dare you. You know why you won't do that? Because the facts of the document don't support the critics. So, yeah, they're not going to do that. Oh, well. Uh, let's go to other bad takes here. Some of these are good takes. Some of them are bad. Like I said, it's just kind of a mixture. Let's see what this one is. Ah! Good old Protestants. Of course, they're exploiting the situation, right? <laughs> good old Mike Winger, who, you know, whose understanding of Catholicism is laughable at best, uh, as I've demonstrated at length on this channel. He says, Catholicism, you got some explaining to do. Um, okay. <laughs> of course, they're going to try to capitalize on this situation, right? Well, okay. Uh, let's go to another one here. Let's see. Okay. Bishop Strickland weighs in. Let's see what he says. Exclusive. Bishop Strickland urges bishops to say no to the Francis blessings of homosexual couples. Notice their sophistry in how they uh, present this. Notice the sophistry of the critics. They want to talk about sophistry. They're the ones who are sophists. They capitalize on ambiguity more than the sophists of antiquity. You know how? They'll talk about blessings of homosexual couples, and they won't explain to you the context of this is the persons of the couple, not the union of the couple. So instead of making that vitally important distinction that makes a world of difference, because now we're distinguishing between blessing the sin versus the sinner. Instead of making those proper qualifications, they engage in sophistry and ambiguity. Ironic, right? Because aren't they the ones critiquing Pope Francis and Vatican II and others saying ambiguity, ambiguity, ambiguity? They're the ones weaponizing ambiguity because they talk about blessings of homosexual couples and they don't qualify it. So that leads the average person to think that what is being blessed here, the object is the union of the couple rather than the persons of the couple. That's the way a lot of people are just going to take this if they hear blessings of homosexual couples and that's all they hear. They're the sophists of today times a thousand compared to the sophists of antiquity. Um, but, okay, he says n to, to urge the bishops to say no. Francis's blessings of homosexual couples. I told y'all what is unfortunate about Bishop Strickland is, I said, he will spiral out of control. After he was rightly removed, he will spiral out of control rapidly. And ever since then, that is what we've been seeing. Ever since then, he has been calling for dissent against the magisterium. And frankly, I think it's only going to get worse with Bishop Strickland. I don't think that it's going to um, get any better, unfortunately. I hope he proves me wrong. Okay, let's go to another one here. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, look, look at the sophistry here of, of LifeSite News and the dissenters. I want to show you their sophistry. Again, the, the accusers who accuse faithful Catholics of being sophists are engaging in projection because that is exactly what they are. They use sophistry to accuse faithful Catholics of sophistry. They're the sophists of today. Look at this from LifeSite News. LifeSite's Vatican correspondent, Michael Haynes, interviewed Fernandez, who hails from Argentina in October, about his openness to blessings for same-sex couples, which he has expressed support for on multiple occasions. Sophistry. They don't tell you. He literally told Michael Haynes at LifeSite News in an exclusive to LifeSite News that his position on same-sex couples is the union cannot be blessed. The union cannot be blessed. And you remember how they hid that interview from us for over three weeks. You recall that? Let me show it to you again. The interview was conducted September 30th on the day he was made a cardinal, which was September 30th. They don't post it until three weeks later, October 19th. And look at the interview. It's literally, what, like four or five sentences? Look, here's the interview. There's the length of it right there. One, two, three, four, five, six sentences. And it takes you three weeks to post that? And what is the first thing he say? What is the first thing that he says to Michael Haynes in LifeSide News? What the church said is that the homosexual union is not blessed. Because it, the church, has the clear definition of marriage, which is a union between a male and female open in life. He's very clear. The union is not blessed. But these sophists don't tell you that and hid that from you for three weeks. And then when they disseminate their fake news, they hide that from you and they don't mention that to you. Interesting point, right? pretty relevant to that part of this article, right? Yeah. They're not going to tell you that, though. So I'll do it for you. All right, well, let's go to the uh, next screenshot here. Uh, again, pulling them up at random. Ah! Again, the Protestants are hard at work here explaining the situation by Whitebeard. Whitebeard is at it. James White. Good old James White. This document was released by the Vatican today. Those of us who have watched various mainline progressives collapsing Sola Scriptura denying denominations implode over the past decades already know how this works. Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, there proceeds a Calvinist uh, pontificating about how this vindicates Sola Scriptura and shows. The Catholic position is false. Yeah. The guy can't be bothered to actually go through the document and read it to you and show you somehow that it vindicates his position. I dare James White. Go through the document. Show it to your audience. Read through it and tell me how it vindicates the Sola Scriptura position and somehow falsifies the Catholic understanding of the magisterium. Would love to see that. You know why? Because number one, I don't think you can do it successfully. And number two, if you attempt to do it, I will certainly do a review of your video and show you where you're wrong. Um, okay. Well, let's see what else we have here. Mm. Okay. Ah. Good old Rorati Celli. Let's see what they, they have to say. Hey, Pope Splinters. A -A, aka Catholics, do you know what would prevent all confusion? Forbid any blessing of any person, couple, relationship that may give even the slightest impression of scandal or irregularity. Okay, so that means that you, whoever wrote this at Rorati Celli, could never receive a uh, blessing because you guys are scandalous. So you guys could never be blessed is what you're telling me. Yeah, not a really good take. Be consistent. <clears throat> Uh, let's see what else we got here. Pull up another one. Who do we have? Father Nicholas Gregoris. 
I don't know this guy, but I thought it was interesting when I was scrolling through to see a priest say this. A priestly blessing is not merely a prayer, but a sacramental, which is by which by definition derives its meaning and efficacy from the sacraments. To bestow priestly blessings on same-sex couples is a mockery of the sacrament of marriage and is ergo a sacrilege. God will not be mocked. Again, as I said, the accuser of the brethren is hard at work in the hearts of Catholics. Some of them are priests. Sad. Uh, Father, hopefully you will go over the actual document instead of uh, this really bad take here. Okay, let's see what else we have. <clears throat> Got a few more for you. Ah, Father Dwight Longenecker. Um, Former Anglican, now Catholic priest, married Catholic priest in the Latin Rite. Yes, we do have some priests in the Latin Rite who are married. Pretty cool, right? I think so. He says, correct me if I'm wrong. I am, after all, after all, only a convert. But a priest has no power to bless what God does not bless, right? Right, Father. How about you actually read the document? That would be helpful. It literally tells you that. Paragraph 5. And I'm just a simple layman, and I can tell you that. That should not be when you're a priest of God. You should know that. Okay. Diocese of San Bernito. While today's declaration from the Vatican's dicastery for the doctrine of the faith affirms that the sacrament of marriage can only be between one man and one woman, it also gives us an important reminder of the love and mercy of Jesus. A blessing is not a sacrament. And anybody can give a blessing to anybody else. A blessing in the biblical sense is the general gesture to wish good to others. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to extend his love and mercy to all our brothers and sisters, including LGBTQ plus couples without qualification or judgment. And I got one more for y'all. I see some super chats. I'll grab those super chats. Uh, by the way, yesterday, uh, I didn't do the Super Chats live during yesterday's show, but I did a separate video answering those Super Chats. Uh, so if you did ask a Super Chat uh, in yesterday's stream where I go through the document, I did a separate video answering them. So certainly go and check it out. I will address in a moment um, <clears throat> questions and Super Chats. If it, Obviously, Super Chats are going to be given priority. So if, if you want your question answered, that would probably be the best way. Y'all could go ahead and put those Super Chats in the uh, comment section now, and I'll do my best to engage them here in a moment. Um, by the way, everybody hit that like and subscribe button so I can grow this channel and reach more people. All right. Um, <clears throat> of course, I, I believe y'all saw Gavin Ortland's take. I don't have a screenshot of it in front of me for some reason, but I just remember that Gavin Ortland's, of course, exploiting this too. Uh, the Protestant Gavin Ortland jumping in, you know, how to, you know, this proves that you Catholics with your infallible papacy kind of stuff. And it's like, oh goodness, again, how many times do we have to explain this to them? And again, notice their failure to actually engage the document itself. They won't do that. Uh, but, you know, when Catholics aren't doing that, it's kind of hard to expect a Protestant to do that, right? But it's interesting that uh, his take, um, I think his bad take, uh, is kind of the conclusion of the uh, of, of those Catholics who have bought into the criticisms of the document. And so it's like, yeah, upon what basis are you guys going to actually refute now refute these Protestants like Ortland? Um, okay. Here's one from Eric Sammons. Let me show my screen. No, gay marriage was not approved. No, liturgical rituals for blessing same-sex unions was not approved. Yes, blessings by priests for same-sex couples was approved. Yes, church teaching on marriage was undermined. No, it wasn't. And again, notice the sophistry here. Blessings by priests for same-sex couples was approved. Notice how they relish in this ambiguity. Instead of saying, when we're talking about blessing same-sex couples, we're talking about blessings the person and the person's of the couple, not the union of the couple. Paragraph 31 and paragraph 5 would bring that out explicitly, in addition to the rest of the document. 
But again, they relish in ambiguity. And then they have the audacity to claim that Vatican II is ambiguous or Pope Francis is ambiguous, while these guys are capitalizing on ambiguity that they've created, that the magisterium has not created, that the magisterium has been cleared on, clear on. So they'll just talk about blessings for same-sex couples, but they won't distinguish for the persons of the couple, not for the union of the couple. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, grab these super chats here. Let's see, Mahoville, if you have a chance, look at a at Philippine Bishops Conference response since they are the uh, only as far as I know, conference that responded officially. I'll have to see that. I haven't seen it. If you can maybe email me the, the link to it, that would be helpful. Also, I'm pleasantly surprised by Daily Wire Rome correspondent Bree Dale and Steve Berman uh, from Bill O'Reilly Network Group. I, I haven't seen their, their take. Um, hey, thank you so much. Input latency. You're a godsend, Michael. Thank you for your work. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Frank C. I appreciate the super chat. Dr. Marshall went through it line by line. It was bad. I need to see this. I haven't, I haven't watched this video yet. I have not seen that. I'll probably do a review of it then. Maybe as early as this evening. <laughs> I can imagine how bad that is. Oh boy. That will be fun. Okay. So yeah, stay tuned for more of that one. <laughs> I I would love to see these critics do line by line reviews much more often because number one, people can fact check them. And number two, I can respond and I can go through a line by line and show their bad takes. Truth uh, Brigade, thank you so much for the uh, uh, gifting of the five memberships there. I appreciate that. Pop, thank you. Happy Christmas, Michael, and lovely rational document reading Pope Splainers. Thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, okay, let's see. Um, okay, Reason in Theology, Taylor Marshall claimed he read the document on stream. He read from paragraph 31, so he didn't read the... Uh, necessary context. Okay. I haven't seen the video, so I cannot comment on the video yet. My question is, did he read through the entire document line by line? Like I did, what is it? 46 paragraphs. Did he read through every paragraph shows you the paragraph reads through it line by line and explains it? <clears throat> or are you saying he read line by line of paragraph 31 only? Cause that's not a reading of the entire document. That would be a reading of one paragraph. I would appreciate the clarification. Um, thank you, Michael, for trying. Find uh, calm in the manger. They're distracting for fame, money, and pride. I don't know what their intentions and motives are. Again, I, I assume most of the critics, their intentions and motives are good. Um, so I'll avoid making judgments on why they're doing this. Um, I'll rather restrict myself to what the net result is. Um, I saw a portion of the stream. He even claimed this is a Jesuit conspiracy against marriage. I haven't seen it, so I don't know if that's accurate or not. I'll I'll watch it though, and I'll review it if if y'all would like. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you think priests need to be careful of scandal, though, don't you? Absolutely. The document is very clear about that, and the catechism that I just read to you um, about the document brings that out. The document is very clear. Uh, avoid at all costs scandal, confusion, and any kind of impression that this is either a marriage or that this is a um, uh, that the union is being blessed. Those are, those are the qualifications it offers. Um, hmm. Okay, sent you links to Patreon. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'll, I'll check that out here in just a second. Um, Michael is going to take Taylor to the cleaners. I haven't seen the video, but I'll be happy to review it. But if y'all can confirm it, okay. No, he read it from 31 onwards. <laughs> okay, so he didn't read the whole document. Gotcha. Okay. Well, 31 onwards, that's not that helpful because, um, Everything leading up to 31 is, is like really important qualifications, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we, we need to read the whole one. So I don't know for sure if that's what he did, but I'm just saying if that's what he did, that's not good enough. 
Um, okay. Let's see. Um, okay. Thank you for this super chat. I said it before, but Michael, you helped me leave the SSPX and you continue to help thousands stay firm in the Catholic faith. Thank you. I appreciate that, Isaac. That That's encouraging to hear. And let me know if I can help um, further in any way. And, and and thank you so much for that super chat. That That's very encouraging. Um, mm, let's see. It's disappointing that MSN is lying about this. MSN and a million others. <laughs> did you <laughs> did you did you expect differently though? Again, I expect that from secular media because I, I understand that they don't, aren't really going to really read the document. All they're just going to see is like uh, paragraph thirty one and also um, the heading for section three that talks about blessings for same sex couples. And I could see how they're just going to run with that to say, see the couple as far as the union itself is what's being blessed. Uh, whereas it's referring to the persons of the couple, not the union. I expect it again from secular news. What's what's shameful is that Catholics do this too. Um, the Vatican just issued a document on blessings. It's clear. Yeah, the document itself is clear. The confusion that the critics cause is, is what brings in the fog and ambiguity, a lack of clarity and confusion. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the super chat. Please do a video about it. Many people in his comments were leaving the church over his review. Uh, sorry to hear that if that's true. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to review it. Okay. Uh, Sean Matthew, thank you for the super chat. Mike, I am sorry you have to keep on doing damage control for all these ratchets who don't know how to read. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, I mean, that's what I'm I'm here to do is, is explain the faith. Um, so I'm happy to clean up the mess that they are causing. That's not to condone them creating confusion and creating the mess, but I'm happy to do my best to defend the church and help clean up their mess uh, and help snatch some people back from the domain of Satan. Um, you know, a, a, a really important uh, priest friend of mine reminded me yesterday about a World War II medic who uh, kept saying, just one more Lord, and, you know, and, and the people that he was, he was saving in battle and, you know, the vast majority of people he can save in battle. It, they're just a casualty and there's nothing he can do about it. He's just one guy. Uh, but he was doing every can thing he can to just at least snatch some of these people back and bring them back and, and um, save them. Uh, even if it's only a few that he can reach. And that's an important reminder for us. I mean, we might not be able to turn the whole tide. We not might not be able to help everybody and save everybody. But we can help at least, you know, one person at a time. Um, and if if it's only for the sake of one person's soul, sure, surely that's worth it, right? Um, and so that's encouraging to remember. Because it can be discouraging to think, golly. Uh, you know, it's hard to put a dent in all this stuff out there. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. Uh, looking through, I think there might be some more super chats. Let's see. All right. Thank you. Input latency. Hey, Tony, if they says the media is all full of liars and Satanists and you need to check the source. How come they trust the media and ignore the sources when talking about Catholicism? <laughs> Thank you. Um, you mean you aren't here to bash the Pope or the church uh, while claiming to be a faithful Catholic? I want my money back. <laughs> Uh, let's see, don't you think the church should be aware of things or receive them, be more prudent? Um, this is a lose lose situation, as I said yesterday. Uh, Pope, Pope, the magisterium is in a lose lose situation. If the magisterium didn't further clarify, um, then what are people going to do? Well, the German bishops are going to continue to be emboldened to exploit their false interpretation. Um, and even the uh, fake traditionalists who are not traditional by any stretch of the imagination, but claim to be, 
the fake traditionalists were attempting to say that Pope Francis had reversed his 2021 decision. Um, and so, no, he hasn't. So it was necessary to address this. And by the way, if he didn't issue a clarification, what would be the criticism? Oh, the Pope allows for all of this chaos. The Pope doesn't clarify. And then he clarifies. And now the criticism is, oh, well, now he's commenting on these things. <laughs> No matter what you do, it's a lose-lose. If you don't further clarify, people will exploit their false claims. If you do further clarify, people won't read the document and they will exploit anything they can out of context and they will twist it to further an agenda. It's a lose-lose situation. So I understand the difficulty that the magisterium is in with the situation. No matter what you do, there's going to be casualties here. No matter what you do, there's going to be confusion and problems. Not from the magisterium, but from the people. So it's a, it's a lose-lose. Can it be more prudent? What, what else would you suggest, suggest it does? Do you know how clear and balanced the document was? How could it be more prudent? I would love to hear some solution to this lose-lose situation that the church is in. Um, are some Catholics more willing to defend Donald Trump than the Pope? <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty odd if that's the case, right? Um, okay. Okay. Uh, hey, Michael, new to the show, and I'm with you uh, with your take of the topic, but do you have to condemn Bishop Strickland? He dedicated his life to the church, dedicated his life to theology. I'm not condemning him. Um, I'm saying that his condemnation of the magisterium and his false accusations are wrong, and I have plenty of videos uh, drawing that out. You're welcome to watch them. Um, <clears throat> he dedicated his life to the church, dedicated his life to theology. Uh, that's literally... You know, every I can mention a million heretics and schismatics who did that. That doesn't really take away from the fact that they might be promoting dissent or something like that. So, um, just because one dedicates their life, Arius dedicated his life. Like, but okay, the question is, in your dedication of your life to the church, are you properly using that vocation or are you abusing it? Um, <clears throat> that's the more important point here. Um, Truth Brigade, thank you for those those memberships that you gifted. Um, okay, how should we respond to f family members and friends who are confused on the Pope's statement? Definitely check out the uh, uh, catechism that we just released on reasonandtheology.com, catechism on the new gay blessings document. Very, very short um, question and answer uh, catechism that will help you explain it. Um, to anybody who has questions. Mm, okay. Well, I think I grabbed all of the super chats, so I'll go ahead and end it there. And I uh, got some more streams coming up, so y'all stay tuned for more coming up shortly. Plenty of more stuff uh, to, to do here. Um, not only in light of this situation, but just other videos as well. Padre Pio was canceled, but he was obedient. Yes, and he was subsequently vindicated for it. Yeah, he's one of my favorite saints. Okay, I will see y'all soon. Hit that subscribe button. Help me grow the channel so I can reach new people who have never heard a response to all of the fake news that is out there who haven't heard a faithful explanation of the Catholic magisterium and are desperate for answers. Help me reach those people. Hit that subscribe button. And if you want to support this ministry and what is taking place here with Reason and Theology to keep this going, patreon.com forward slash reason and theology got a link to it in the show notes is a great way or the gofundme or the paypal link there in the show notes please consider supporting this ministry there all right stay tuned for plenty more see y'all soon oh and by the way go and uh go and get your pope splainer t-shirt at reasonmerch.com if you want to be a certified pope splainer you're proud to show it to people 
Pope Splainer, aka Catholic. Reasonmerch.com. See you later. God bless. Are you a Catholic thinking about converting to Eastern Orthodoxy? Or are you a Protestant discerning whether or not to become Catholic or Eastern Orthodox? If so, I have the book just for you. It's called Answering Orthodoxy and engages all of the arguments that Eastern Orthodox use against the Catholic Church. I respond to all of them. I show that they are in error and in fact they're inconsistent because the things that Orthodox are objecting to are in fact found in their own tradition. So the fullness of the faith can only be found in the Catholic Church. Check out the book right now at shop.catholic.com for your copy today. Hey everybody, just wanted to tell you about my new free ebook, Church Chaos, Biblical Insights for Confused Catholics. If you are a confused Catholic and you're thinking about leaving the Catholic Church or you're thinking about converting to the church but you see that there's a crisis in the church and you're just unsure, this is the book for you. Again, it is free. Just simply go to reasonandtheology.com. You'll see a pop-up that comes up on your screen. Just simply click on it and you'll put in your email and it will provide you the free PDF ebook right then and there. Please check it out if you're confused about the situation in the Catholic Church today. Reason and Theology. Are you confused about how Catholic teaching authority works with encyclicals, papal bulls, councils, and many other things? It's easy to get confused on what is authoritative and what is not. Fortunately, at MaximusInstitute.com, I have prepared a course explaining the magisterium from A to Z. Visit the website and check out the course Understanding the Magisterium for more information.